Shalom, the Puff Star coming back at you with this truth. Giving all praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, And I'm going to entitle this video Back to the Basics. Reincarnation is biblical. Reincarnation is biblical. So, what I did was I typed in the word reincarnation and a bunch of on YouTube and a bunch of uh, videos popped up. So I'll read through some from start your free trial on uh, Gaia, and I believe that's Greek for the earth, uh, the cult, and uh, paranormalgaia.com. Free past life quiz. Who were you in past life or in a past life? Children's Past Lives, Reincarnation Documentary, Real Stories, Shocking Evidence of Reincarnation, Ancient Mysteries. This is from the History Channel. All the major TV uh, channel stations, cable stations, whatever, they all have YouTube accounts. And they, um, a lot of them got on board Excuse me, excuse me. A lot of them got on board. Uh, YouTube, I would say, some of them, 2006, YouTube came out in a 20, 2005. Um, you had uh, the IUIC. They put video, they started putting the video, videos up sometime in 2006. And um, the uh, GOCC, the Gawk, they put in uh, put up videos in 2006, and we started putting up videos in 2007. Now I knew about YouTube, I knew about their pages, and the spirit. Uh, we were filming the street speakings, and the spirit finally jumped on me in the summer, July, of um, 2007. Right. Also, check this out. As of July of 2022, that's 15 years, right? 7, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22. So we're 15 years on YouTube pushing this, this truth, pushing uh, the gospel, all the ups and downs, all the blessings and the cursings. So it says shocking evidence of reincarnation, uh, ancient mysteries, a full episode, which is 40, 45 minutes long by the history, uh, history. You might want to watch that. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, half Mick, half Kenny. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, Irish on one side and he's more so Southern Italian on the other. So. He's most likely a Jake, a shit talking Jake. Joe Rogan on what's terrifying about reincarnation. She remembered everything. Dead girl comes back to life, knows secrets she shouldn't. This is bullshit. Russian boy claims he lived on Mars in the past life, in your dreams. I'm from, I'm from, <laughs> I'm from 30, 3019, I guess you can call that reverse reincarnation. Classified, only a few people on earth know about it. And you gotta watch it to find out. 
what he's talking about. A little boy claims he's uh, reincarnated uh, so-called Princess Diana. The many reincarnation stories of Cynthia Henderson. So at one time in her life, she was a black woman. Past life, six signs you sh your soul has reincarnated many times. Well, we all we were all here many, many times. Michael Jackson was a pharaoh at one time. Top 10 signs of reincarnation found in history. The man woke up from a 19 year coma and what he told disturbed every, what he said disturbed everyone, everyone. Every, um, three mis mysterious reincarnation stories. If, if died of old age, rebirth within 48 hours doesn't work like that scripturally. Who is she? Explain mysteries that need some serious explaining. Uh, Dr. Eben Alexander, Evan, on reincarnation in past lives. Larry King. Three chilling reincarnation stories that will make you believe. Anyway, let's go right into the scriptures. I'm not going to make this long. I'm not going to hit every precept on reincarnation. I'll leave that up to others to do other videos. I'm going to focus mainly on, well, I got to start at Malachi. These are the go-to go scriptures to, to prove that reincarnation is biblical. Because all I have to do is prove one case, and I don't have to do any more. And there's a lot, a lot of precepts, a lot of, a lot of precepts um, that prove that reincarnation is in fact biblical, and that you were here in past, past lives. So you know what I'm going to do? The key point is in really the fifth and the sixth verse, but I'm going to start at the first because it's a short scripture. Final admonition, meaning stiff warning. If you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get locked up. You're going you're gonna to get life. You know, they got the three strikes rule, three strikes and you're out. You know, you go, and that was set up by uh, the first black president, according to you, Bird brain Negroes, Clinton, he was behind that three strikes rule. If you get three felonies, the third felonies, it's an automatic life sentence. Okay, so it said, uh, Malachi 4, verse 1. But behold, a day cometh that shall burn as an oven. You know what that means. Esau doesn't know what it means. And all the proud, yeah, who are the proud? We know who the proud are, the, the Edomites. The day that cometh that shall burn as an oven is talking about Babylon the Great being set on fire by, by the missiles, by the ICBM missiles, by the uh, uh, whatever missile, intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missile that a nation possesses. Um, and also this hypersonic missile, which can, cannot be detected by radar. You, you should look into that. You know, go to Google and say, can, can a hypersonic missile be detected by radar? And that's, now you understand what it's mean by 
what it, what it means by in you know, Second Peter three. You can start at the tenth verse. That is going to be a sneak a sneak attack, right? Anyway, so read that, and that's what we should be talking about: the nuclear destruction, pursuant to what Peter said. Our conversation should be about the destruction of this man, of this system. And this man is going down. But the Most High is not going to destroy the whole earth. The earth abideth forever. Uh, Ecclesiastes 1. But Babylon the Great, which is America, will be utterly destroyed. As said, before, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And we're talking about an ancient oven. And all the proud, which are the Edomites, yeah, and all that do wickedly, these are other nations and Jake. They, they, that say the evil shall not take or pre prevent us, uh, uh, Amos 9, uh, shall be stubble. And when the smoke is clear, when the fire is out, what do you have left? Stubble. That's what, that's what this place is going to be, be, stubble. And it's going to turn into a desert, the biggest desert on the planet. And the day that come, cometh shall burn them up, saith Yahweh of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root or branch. Well, if you have a branch of a tree, you know, you can grow from it, I believe. But the root, the root, uh, the, if you if you cut a tree down and you don't uproot it, guess what? The tree grow, grows back. So Esau is going to be uprooted, meaning he's never going to come back into power. So that means what? According to what Lahab said, that uh, Esau, after a thousand years of us in the kingdom, Esau is going to jump on us again. He's going to jump the Most High. He's going to jump Yahweh Shai. He's going to jump King David. He's going kick to kick our asses. To put us back into slavery. How stupid is that? Second verse, Malachi 4, verse 2. But unto you that fear my name. Now you got this. I got to speak on this. You got you got a Bishop Nathaniel and his motley crew out there going to churches, cursing them out. And they're calling on the same name as the, name as the damn churches, man. The Lord's name is not Jesus Christ. I said, but unto you that fear my name. Shall the, son of, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. You're going to be fed. You're going to be taken care of. And ye shall tread down the wicked. Who, who are the wicked? Go to Malachi 1. Read the whole, the whole chapter. It's a short chapter. And ye shall tread down the wicked. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, say of the Lord of hosts. Or Yahweh of, of uh, armies. Hosts meaning armies. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded you, commanded unto him in Horeb, Horeb, for all Israel, national Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The great and dreadful day of the Lord is when this man goes down. The Most High takes this man by a, a thing called conflagration. Look that up. And he that, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. This is Elijah. And the heart of the fathers to the children are the men that he taught, that taught us. And, and, and the name when Elijah came back, he came back in the form of a man by the name of Abba Bivens. And he taught many people, but the people that remained and kept teaching was Masha, Arya, and Yaquab. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children 
and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, John, when he came back, the wicked scribes and Pharisees came up to him and he said, who told you that you can flee from the wrath to come? What do you mean when he said the wrath to come? He was talking about this destruction, the day that cometh that shall burn as an oven. So anyway, for a uh, fifth verse, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful, dreadful day of the Lord. So where's the record of Elijah coming back? Now let's go here to Matthew 11. Our Lord's tribute to John, meaning John did not fall out the truth. That's what ISUPK is teaching. John did not fall out the truth. Oh, well, he, he, he fell out because he didn't follow the, the, the Messiah. He wasn't supposed to. He was a forerunner. That's a fulfillment of Isaiah 40. So when you read from the seventh verse, the key point I want is I got to read some seven. This is the Lord's tribute to John. And as they, seven verse, Matthew 11, and as they departed, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, began to say unto the multitude concerning John, what went ye out to into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind, meaning a weak guy, he wasn't a weak guy. But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft remnant? What does that mean? They, you know, he was dressed to impress, so to speak. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses, and it was expensive to buy a goodly garment. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet, this is what the Lord said. Matter of fact, let me go to the red letter edition. Where the hell is it? A red, lesson, red letter edition. Okay, all oh, that's in red. That means this is this is the Lord, this is the Lord speaking. I said for this, for this, he tells him he's a prophet. Yes, I say nine verse. Matthew 11, verse 9. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yeah. I say unto you, and more than a prophet. So not only did the Lord say he's a prophet, meaning a prophet of the Most High, not a false prophet, but a true prophet. But he said, and he's, he's a prophet and a bag of chips. You know? He's a prophet in macaroni and cheese on his side with candy yams. He's a prophet plus. He's a special prophet. And why did the Lord say that? Because the work he did as John the Baptist and the work he did as Elijah the prophet. Same man. And if you can't see it, you, 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 it's not meant for you to see it. This truth is not for everybody. Read uh, Matthew 13 around about the 12 verse or so. That's why, why you think the Lord spoke to, to them in parables. Because it was meant to go over certain people's heads. But this is he of whom it is written by who? By Isaiah. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way. Whose way? The Lord's way. So how the hell did he fall? For he fell out the truth. See, if he would have followed you, how was shy? He, uh, you know, he, he wouldn't have died. You guys, you air not knowing the scriptures. 
before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there have not risen a greater than John. So he's saying this is the greatest prophet that ever lived, the Baptist. And why did the Lord say that? Because what he did as John the Baptist, he didn't do too much. He wasn't on the earth too long. He was taken out of the scene, but he was being praised for his for the work that he did in a, in a previous life as Elijah. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom, which he's talking to the disciples of heaven is greater than he, meaning in the kingdom, the order is the first man in the kingdom is going to be King David, which is Peter. See, King David came back as Peter, one of the disciples, one of the apostles. And in the kingdom of heaven, he's going to be sitting on the throne. He's going to be sitting on the throne, which is David. He's, he's also Jacob. Uh, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he, because they're going to have a higher position than Elijah in the kingdom. If anything, he'll probably be number 13. If you want to put it, if you want to put him in a, on a list. But the Lord did say among Men that are born a woman, there's no greater than the than Elijah, than this prophet, than John. 12 verse, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. And the violent or the violent ones take it by force. This is talking about the Roman Empire. This is when, it, when the Roman Empire occupied and made Palestine a province of the Roman Empire. So they made us pay a tribute, which is a tax. Now, let me do this. Let me do this. I want to go to the NET. Let's see what that says. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and forceful people. Ooh, I like that. And forceful people lay hold of it. Let me read that again. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven in Luke 17, I believe it is, that the, the Lord told Israelites, guys and Pharisees, that the kingdom of heaven is within you. So what is the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of heaven is Israel on the earth. The kingdom of heaven is being established by us going out there on the highways and the byways. It says from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. And the fought and forceful people, who are the forceful people? The Romans. Lay hold of it. Of what? Of the Israelites. It's a people before it's a place. The Romans didn't get up in no a, a spaceship and go up into heaven and take the kingdom down. So you dumbass, monkey-minded Christians think that bullshit. So now, you know what, let me try a couple more. Let me go to the NLT. And from the time John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people are attacking it. What violent people are attacking it? You know what I'm going to do? Let me go to the commentary. Let's see what they say about in the commentary. These these monkey-minded Christians say, well, that's that war in heaven. Satan got his angels together. Uh, that's Revelation 12. Anyway, let's put this in. Let 
the most I gave this truth to babes. We are the babes, meaning insignificant ones. Try that again. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence. They said forceful people or violent people take it by force. Let's see what the comment commentators have to say. So let's go to Cambridge uh, Bible for schools and colleges. It's normally the shortest commentary. And from trans translated, but from another point showing the greatness of John and also the beginning of the kingdom, which is Israel, Luke 17. I believe it's Luke 17. It was from the time of John's preaching that men began to press into the kingdom and the earnest and the earnest won their way in for the preaching of John was the epoch to which all prophecies, prophecy tended, suffered violent. Let's see what they say about this. We know that the, the, the violent ones of the Roman Empire is force broken into as a ship enters a harbor by breaking the boom stretch across the harbor's mouth. John's preaching was a, the signal for men to press. It broke, it went off, it went off to accept eagerly the new rule and life headed by John and set forth by the Messiah. Uh, they went off, the violent take it by force. The, the eager and um, enthusiastic followers of the Messiah seized the kingdom, win it as a prize of war. They completely went off. Oh my goodness. Let me go, let me come here. Let me put in the word wrong. Put in the word wrong. What the hell just happened? Do this. It's not even in there. Hey, Rome is not even in there. And we know, you go back to history, it was the Romans that took over Israel. So let's come on back. It says, and violent people attack it. When violent people attack it, the Romans. So we're back in the, the King James. Matthew 11, verse 12, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven, which are the Israelites, suffereth violence by, by the hands of who? And the violent take it by force. Now, now, others' translations say, and forceful people take it by force. The for, what, who, who occupied, you know what, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me do this. Let me just do this right here. Bear me for a minute. Okay, I don't need this. Let me hit Google. Just hit Google. Bear me for a minute. Computer's acting up.
Okay, I'm gonna do it this way. Who occupied Palestine during the time of Christ? The Roman Empire. That's all I need. That's all I need. So now let's come back over here. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven, which are the Israelites, the Lord said the kingdom of heaven is, is within you, right? He was talking to Israelites. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. What did I put in Google? Let's go back to it. Who occupied Palestine during the time of Christ? The Roman Empire, Palestine, Palestine and so I'll read, I hate saying Christ and Jesus. Jesus' day was part of the Roman Empire, which controlled its various territories in a number of ways. And why, were they able, why did they have rulership over us? Because they had force and the violent take it by force. So we got that out the way, right? And, um, and what is that, Luke 4? The Lord opens up the scriptures. I'm here to set the captives free. He was talking about the Romans. He said, I'm here to free you from the Romans. But he was going to free you when the Romans came back, you know, Romans duh. You know, Romans part two, which is NATO, the EU, America, and Canada, this current system. It says, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias or Elijah, which was for to come. Right? He said, and if ye will receive it if, it, if it registers, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that hath an ear, or he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And I don't got to read no more. I can close the book. So now let me do this. If ye will receive, if... And if ye will receive it, this is Elias or Elijah, which is forth to come, right? Let me do this. Because some, some of you churchgoers might say, well, Elias, that ain't Elijah. That's a different guy. It's obvious that's a different guy. So let me, let me, uh, let me click on Elias. The Greek way of saying Elijah. Here it is. Alayah. Alayah. So they're telling you that Elias is a Greek way of saying Elijah. That's Elijah. Alayah. Alayah. There was no J in the Hebrew. If there was a J in the Hebrew, you would say Elijah. That's the English way of saying uh, Alaya. The Lord, when he was on the cross, did not he say Alaya? And they said, he's calling for Elijah. No, he was saying Allah meaning power or God and Yah, not without minus the, the uh, suffix ha. It was Alaya, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Alaya, Alaya. Because he felt the presence leave him. But yet he's God. <laughs> okay, a prophet born at, uh, born at uh, Tishbe, uh, the unflinging unfling, um, champion 
of the theocracy and the, and the reigns of the idolatrous King Ahab and Isaiah, he was taken up to heaven without dying. Hence, the Jews expected the word, the, he would return just before the advent of the Messiah, which he did as Abba Bivens, whom he would prepare the minds of the, of the, ooh, and who he will prepare the minds of the Israelites to receive, receive a, what Israelites did he reach? Masha, Arya, and Yaquab, which is Peter, John, and James. Masha, Arya, and Yaquab. This truth, that's all, of, see, the, 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 uh, the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, their focus is on the, uh, on the one Westerns, man. And they, they make a difference between the one West Israelites and these other Israelite groups. Basically, the other Israelite groups, the IOG and the rest of them, or GOCC, they're, not a, they're really not a threat because they say Edomites can make it. They said the, the major groups that they got to look at in the, in the Southern, look it up for yourself. I read it the other day. The Southern Poverty Law Center, when they went into that whole thing about Israelism, they said the, the major groups out there is IUIC, ISUBK, GMS, and Sakari. That's what they mentioned. That's what they mentioned. They should have mentioned Zabak, because Zabak, you raised in hell too. So all, you know, all props to, to uh, priest Zabak. But, um, and then there's uh, some others. But you, you know why they mentioned them four groups? Because they're, they're, they're visible, man. They're all on, all on YouTube, all up on the video, all up on the records. You know? Hey, we always making, look, the spirit's on us now. The spirit's on us more, on us more than it was a year, two years ago, three years ago. Because now we're doing videos, not just one video a day, sometimes three videos a day. Because the spirit, they must, everything, things are getting closer, intensive, and uh, things are, you know, in, intensifying. You know, it's urgent. It's urgent, man. You know, we're 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 at the the. If you ever ran track, you ran ran a hundred, which I used to, I used to beat a lot of people in the hundred yard dash, and that includes I beat everybody. I was fast as hell. But right before you hit that tape, you would speed it up because I ran distance and I ran uh, sprint sprints and I was a better sprinter than I was a distance. But because we didn't have a good distance runner, I became a distance runner. You see, but this is beautiful right here, man. It says, Elijah, my God is Jehovah. Nah. Mm, actually, Elijah, yeah, you could say that. But when the Lord said, Allah, Yah, Allah, Yah, <clears throat> it meant my, my God, my God. It said a prophet born in Tishbi, he was a Tishbite, the unflinching, let me look up this word, unflinching. Unflinch and unflinching. Unflinching. What does it mean? What does it mean? Not showing fear or hesitation in the face of danger or difficulty. So he he kept his hand to the plow, so to speak. As a matter of fact, when Elisha was called in, and I believe that's High Priest Arya. That's my personal belief. Now he was another rough rider because when he when he uh, got with Elijah, he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. Let me let me try to find that. 
Let me try to find that. So now I'm all over the place, but that's all right. Let me go, let me go to yoke. Yoke of oxen. Yeah. Ox, oxen, let's hope I spell this right, I'm not the best speller. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, uh, First Kings 19, verse 19. So he departed thence and found Elisha. Let me, let me go up a verse above that. Everybody's reincarnated. Mm, 18 verse, let's see what it says in the 18 verse. First Kings 19, verse 18, yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal. And if you should read from the first verse, which I'm not going to do, and every mouth which have not kissed him. So, you know, when you go to like the Roman Catholic Church, you kiss, you, you know, the people that are Roman Catholic, they kiss the idols and all that. That's where they got it from. Or kissing the idol of Bell. So he that's why the scripture said in, in Psalms 2, kiss the son, son, let at least he be angry, meaning embrace the son. So he departed thence and found Elisha. This is Elijah, the son of she, Shephat. And I believe that's judgment. I gotta look it up. I'm not gonna look it up. Who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. A yoke of oxen is two oxen. So he had 24 oxen. That was a strong, powerful, rough dude. He wasn't no weak guy before him. And he with the with the with the 12th, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran. Now that that's beautiful because the first one precept that come to mind is uh, Luke. Uh, what is that? Uh, Luke 9 and 62. He that turned his back on the plow is not fit for the kingdom. What he did was he put, oh, oh, he held, he, he stopped the plow and he went and followed Elijah, right? That was his understudy. When you go back to the, if you get any uh, cassettes, old, old school cassettes of, of uh, Abba Bivens teaching, his number one reader, his best reader was, was High Priest Ariah. So that's a that's that's a lisha, in my in my opinion, man. It says, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. Oh, guess what? Guess what? He ran, he became a disciple of Elijah, right? Did he become a who became disciples of John? John the Baptist, three of his disciples was John. James, his brother, and, and Andrew. And then, and then Peter came in after Andrew, but Peter got the, the highest seat. And, said, and, he, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And, and he said unto him, go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them. He killed two of them. Like I said, you got to picture this in your mind. This guy was no weak guy. He was just, he was a muscular, strong. He had a long beard. He wasn't wearing a fancy garment like the IUIC be wearing those, um, those, uh, uh, um, you know, enterprise zoot suits with fringes on it. 
Um, you know, when you out there in the field working, you don't be, you don't put on your best suit. You know, you put on your overalls, baby. It says, and, and boil their flesh. Oh, this is a cut from my man, the minister of well, wellness. This, this, this is oxen. You ain't supposed to eat meat. Meat is not in the Bible. That, that word, when you come across the word meat, it really doesn't it mean vegetables. Come on, man. If you don't get your act together, the most I'm going to kill you with all them herbs with your ass, man. Get with the program. I like you, but goddamn, you out of order. It says, and, and, and he returned back. And how do you keep the Passover? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the, with the instruments of the ox, oxen. He brought, boiled a whole oxen and gave unto the people and did eat. So can you eat oxen? You tell them, you know, you go to somebody's house and they give you a plate and it looks like uh, cut like a steak. And what, this is good. What is this? It's oxen. You probably spit it up. Look, you can you can eat an ox. You can eat an oxen or an ox. I can't wait to get in the kingdom to eat some ox. Oh, you eat oxtails, which really is cow tails, but they marketing reason they call it oxtails. It's really cow cows tails. It said, and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he rose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Did not, did not um, Arya minister unto Elijah? When I first came to school, in the back of the school, you had pictures of Abba Bivens. You had one picture of a 12-year-old Arya sitting right next to him. So he was born in the truth. So if, if our high priest Arya is who he is in the past, then the Most High going to bring him up out of that, man. He's going to take them filthy garments on him and, and give him a, a, a mitri, a clean, a, a, a righteous michi, a, meat, a, meat, a michi, a, meat, a martizan pot. I say michi, michi, I say michi. Okay? So, and see... You churches don't, this, this is going way over your head. It's going way over your head. And, and, it's, and it's way, it's, it's a million miles over Vocab Malone's head. He can't see it. Because why? Because you're the wicked. And the wicked shall not understand. Daniel 12 and 10. Read it sometimes, Vocab. Okay, so I'm all over the place. I didn't want this to be too long, but that's how the spirit wants it. Man's goings of the Lord. But I love this, man. The water to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Kodash for leading me to um, Elias, which means Elijah in the Hebrew, the Greek way of saying Elijah. And what does it say? A prophet born at Tishbe, the unfringing champion. He didn't move. He didn't skate. He didn't back up. He didn't take time off. Champion of the of the theocracy in the reigns of the idolatrous kings Ahab and um, uh, Isaiah, uh, uh, Ahiza, Zaya. He was taken up to heaven without dying, meaning of a, a spaceship, a UFO. So you can understand, came down, beamed him up, and took him. And what happened? Just like beam me up, Scotty, they went from one planet back to the ship, from the ship down to a planet. Same thing, same principle. Esau understands that principle, but Esau can't do it. Now, I believe they tapped into it. Uh, what is that called? A pro the Manhattan Project, where they kind of made people disappear. But, they, you know, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother lesson. Because Esau is tapping into things that, that's over his head. He, he opened, opened up CERN. And all kind of things been happening. This man's going down. This man's going down, man. Them demons are not talking to him. 
So they're pretty much like Saul. The demons are not talking to him no more and telling them what to do. So they're pretty much like Saul. They're trying to go, they try, let's open a CERN. Maybe the demons will come through CERN. You know, the, the, um, uh, King Saul, he, he, he sought out a witch, which he banished all the witches, but he sought one, you know, and he wanted, he wanted, it was, he said that I, I received no dream, no visions, anything. And there was a demon that was on him. Go, that's a whole other story too. So you're telling me you ain't got no, well, I ain't got no subject. There's all kinds of, you can go into David, you can go into uh, Saul. Uh, the Most High took the spirit. Samuel took, uh, Samuel told him, look, this is, this is why you, you know, the spirits ain't coming to you. This is why you ain't seeing vision, you ain't dreaming dreams because the Most High rejected you. So guess what? Esau feels like he's being rejected now. Them demons are not coming to him like they used to. That's why they, they blew down the, um, the uh, Georgia Guidestones, man. They opened up CERN. They did a lot of things in this week. A major uh, uh, leader of Japan, got former leader, got put to death allegedly. So a lot of things have been happening. They just, oh, they said a couple of days ago, a PSA in New York City, if there's a nuclear blast, stay in your houses. So there's, there's, there's something that they see that they ain't talking about. There was a meeting, I believe it was NASA or some other group as a, as a group of uh, people that deal with telescopes and going out into space. And um, Biden was there and they, he said something about the press and they, they kicked the press out. They said, oh, y'all can leave, y'all can leave. And then it was a black woman sitting next to this uh, so-called president. And uh, she said, yeah, we're just gonna wait until the press leaves and we can pick it back up. And then, this, and then the feed went black, blank. If I can find a video, I'll, I'll give it up to you. I was watching it last night. I said he was taken up to heaven without dying. He was beamed up into a ship. Uh, once, once the Jews ex expected he would return just before the advent of the Messiah, meaning before the second advent of the Messiah, who, which he was John, I mean, which was uh, Abba Bivens, whom he would prepare the minds of the Israelites to receive. Did he have to, did, how did he pre re prepare the mind of the Israelites to, to uh, receive? That was Abba, when he broke off from the commandment commandment keepers. And he was the only one that went into the New Testament. Them guys stayed in the Old Testament. They're not significant anymore. And who was the, 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 the three guys, three individuals that came up on them? These were special men. Why? Because those same three individuals, um, the Yahweh Shai took them when he was in the garden before he was, before he was put to death. All right, and they saw the likeness of Elijah on one side and, and um, Moses on the other. And then Yahweh Shai in the middle. So there was three men that with him, that was with him. He didn't take all the 12. And the Lord, two of the Lord's biological brothers were part of the 12. He didn't take them because there was an order. The Most High said, this is gonna be the order. Peter's number one, John is number two, and, and um, James is number three. And then the Most High preserved the life of John so the Most High could give him the, uh, the revelation, which we call the book of Revelation, which was for what? The seven churches of Asia Minor. So this book was brought together for us now. Everything is reincarnated, man. J uh, Jude says, though you once knew, I will bring this to your remembrance, though you once knew this. What, is, what does that mean? We knew this in another life. The 10 virgins, they slumbered and slept and it was a cry made. Come on now. If you can't see this, it's not meant for you to see it, man. You're not of the elect. Your eyes are not open. The most high didn't tap into your pineal gland. And you might say, well, let me get some go-to cola and some, uh, what, what was that? It was another, the main thing is go-to cola. That can and eating right, changing your diet, stop eating soul food, 
and it'll open up your pineal gland. That, that doesn't mean because your pineal gland is cleansed that you're going to receive uh, visions. The Lord closed Saul's pineal gland. Straight up calcified it, man. So anyway, anyway, I'm going on the rant here. But let's do this. I like this. I like this. Let's remember this. This is from Matthew 11, verse 13, right? Let me do this. Okay, let's do this here. And if you receive it, this is a lie that will just fall to come. So that's why when you click, when I click to uh, the blue letter, it explained that they were expecting Elijah to come back. So they, so these Edomites know that was John, but they don't understand that he came back again as Abba Bivens. That's why Vocab was so intrigued about Abba Bivens, because he believes this, but he's, but he's in denial. He knows that he's going in the sleigh. He better hope like hell he's an he's a Israelite that just went off. You get destroyed in the, in, in the missiles, but, that, but at least you can come back as an Israelite. That's a good thing because you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it unless you completely, if you, you got to gotta do a number of things. You got to be an Israelite, number one. You got to repent and you got to get with one of the camps. You got to join GMS if you're an Israelite and you got to be on fire and you got to condemn all the bullshit that you've been teaching for all these years. Because your kingdom is coming to an end. Even though you're Israelite, you're on his side. He that is joined unto them shall be what? What does it say in Isaiah 13? You're joined unto them. You're joined unto the devil. That's why I called you the devil. Just another devil. So you better hope like hell you're an Israelite. And I'm betting that you're an Edomite until you prove otherwise. Prove all things and hold fast to that, which is good. So it says, and if and if ye will receive it, this is Elias or Elijah, which is forth to come. So now let me do this. And then I'm going to get ready to close. I don't even got to go into um, Matthew 17. So that, I'll leave that for somebody else. So I'm stretching this topic out, but you're getting a lot of information. Matthew 11, verse 14. And if ye will, re if ye will receive it, if you can um, understand it, if, if it registers, this is Elias, which, which was for to come. So the Lord's saying that the that Cambridge. They don't know too much about it. There's, there's a hot potato to them. If ye receive it, the present unhappy circumstance in which John was placed seem inconsistent with such a view of his mission. They didn't say, they don't know. It, when, you, when you see just like one line, they don't know. They got to say something. Let's try another one. Okay, let's see what, see what Barnes notes on the Bible says. If ye receive it, this, this is a mode of speaking implying the doctrine which he was about to state was different from their common views that he was about to state uh, something which vary from the common expectation and which therefore they might be disposed to reject. That's what, right, that's why he said if you will receive it. You might not, might not be on the level to receive it. This is Elias. That is Eli Elijah. Elias is the Greek mode of the writing of 
writing the Hebrew word Elijah. Didn't I, didn't I explain that? But if I said that, you just made that up. They're talking about Elijah. Elias. Not talking about Elijah. It's talking about Elias. It's a different guy. Well, they said it. They said an account of him is found in the first and second books of Kings. Um, he was a distinguished prophet and was taken up to heaven in the, cloud, in the chariot of fire. The prophet Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6 predicted that Elijah would be sent before the coming of the Messiah to prepare the way for him. That's John. John even said that. I'm, I'm one in the wilderness preparing the way, preparing the way. By this was evidently meant not that he should appear in person, but that one should appear with a striking result. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say it. It does not say that, you fucking devils. To him, or as Luke 1 verse 17 expresses it in the spirit and power of, the, of Elijah. Me, meaning the spirit. The spirit of the prophets is subject unto the prophets. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, number 32, 32nd verse. But the Jews understood it differently. They supposed that Elijah would appear in person, which they were right, you dummies. But the Jews understood it differently. They supposed that Elijah would appear in person, and he actually did in the form of John. The spirit of the prophet is subject in the, to the prophets. He shall come in the spirit and the power of Elijah, because that is the spirit of Elijah. They also, see, they, they can't accept, they can't fathom, they can't understand. It, it, it will not register that reincarnation is biblical. And for anybody that can't get it, you watch my video, go fly a kite. They also suppose that Jeremiah and some other, other prophets would appear also to usher in the promised Messiah. And they heard, and they and they hear Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, all of them are here. And to and to and to grace his advent. See Matthew 16, verse 14, Matthew 17, verse 10. I wanted to read that, I, I'm, but I'm not. John 1, verse 21. Let me let me go to Matthew 16, verse 14. I already know what it says. It doesn't come up. But that's this is this is where um, the Lord said to Peter, Who do you say I am? He said, You are the Messiah. And he said, Flesh and blood have not revealed it unto you. In other words, he didn't find no secret hidden manuscript or no uh, cuneiform that said that he was it. In other words, in the, the spirit told him, Some things you know in the spirit. This uh, prevalent belief was the reason why he used the words, If ye will receive it implying that the affirmation that John was the promised Elijah was a doctrine contrary to their expectations. Well, the Jews got it right. It says, but the Jews understood it differently. They supposed that Elijah would appear in person. They supposed that Elijah would appear in person, which he did. And in Matthew 17 and 10, he appears again as Abba Bivens. Abba Bivens is Elijah coming back, fulfilling Malachi uh, 4, verse 5 and 6. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.